Hey there, so Beatlink was kind enough to send me a sample of their new Mini S 12th generation. Their Mini S series is completely focused on using low power Intel CPUs, and this is rocking an Intel N95, which is a new Alder Lake processor. It annoys me to no end that Intel has stopped using the Celeron and Pentium naming scheme, but this is within that class in terms of performance. In terms of the actual specs, the N95 has four cores with four threads, and this system comes paired with 8 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM running at 3200 megahertz, but it is single channel and you cannot upgrade to dual channel, and it has a 256 gigabyte SSD. And I really find that these low power Intel CPUs have gotten really good. And I'm going to show you what are a bunch of different things that you can actually use this system for outside of just gaming, because it's not really what it's meant for, but it does do an excellent job in a lot of different tasks. And yeah, it can even do some gaming. I'm not saying it can't. It's just one of those things where it's not really the thing that excites me the most about a system like this. It really comes down to that processor. Now, B-Link was also kind enough to include this sticker here that essentially kind of lets you bypass Windows, essentially forcing you to log into an account. Very useful information for family members out there that might be struggling to set up their own PC. Taking a look at the actual body of the system, though, you can see here that it is a actually very nice design. Now, the whole chassis is made out of plastic, but it doesn't feel cheap and it doesn't feel like it's just going to fall apart in my hands. In general, I'm a big fan of B-Link's design philosophy on there systems they all kind of tend to be around the same shape and design and in general i'm a big fan of it now in terms of io on the system we do get the two hdmi you get the one ethernet you get two usb in the back and two in the front as well as a headphone jack next to the power button and if we compare it size wise next to the b-link sere5 you can see it's just slightly smaller both in terms of height and width it is ever so slightly smaller but it is noticeably lighter if you compare the io between the two of them it's very similar though and in fact depending on what version of the sre5 you get you still no matter what end up with less usb 3.0 ports now the biggest difference comes to the front area where what you're really missing out on is the usb c port which to me it is a kind of a massive omission one thing i do appreciate is this little rubber tab at the bottom that is essentially designed to make it very easy to open up the system and real quick, I'm going to show you how easy it is to upgrade this little system. All you really have to do is just open up the bottom, just these four screws here. It should be extremely easy to do. They are not over tightened out of the factory or anything like that. Now, once you have those out, don't just yank on this little rubber thing extremely hard or anything. Be gentle with it. Just wiggle things loose. You don't want to get super aggressive with it. You want to control the force that you use because of the fact that underneath is actually the ribbon cable for the caddy itself you pretty much just take your ssd and slide it in there and you're good to go of course now that you're here you can also upgrade the ram and the ssd there if you would like keep in mind that you do only get single channel ram with this system that is just how the n95 is configured by intel themselves but with this single slot here you can go all the way up to 32 gigabytes of ram if you'd like and you do also get the chance to upgrade the m.2 there now loading into the actual desktop itself you can see here with the system doing pretty much nothing at idle we're using about two gigabytes gigabytes of memory. I did run a very, very simple deep loading script that just disables some of the background stuff that Windows actually ends up doing, and that did bring down our memory usage pretty significantly here. And considering that we only have eight gigabytes of RAM, it is a welcome thing to do. But just to get a baseline of where the performance we were going to be at was, I decided to run Cinebench R23. Now this is a completely CPU focused benchmark, but it's really the CPU that is the most interesting aspect of this whole system system itself to me. So it was what I was the most curious about seeing where it stood in terms of performance. Now taking a look at the actual results, it's pretty interesting. Here you can see at the multi-core score, we have two results here. We have the bottom one, which was the system running at its stock configuration, which was a maximum TDP of 20 watts. And the second one was once I configured the TDP to 25 watts. And what I found the most interesting is just how close these results are actually 
actually to my i5 6600K, which the result there right on top of it is with the system overclocked to 4.3 gigahertz. And measured at the wall, it was sucking down around 95 watts in the middle of this benchmark, while the N95 was only using 20 and 25 watts. And this is really what makes the system the most interesting to me. If we take a look at the single core performance, you can see here that we are just slightly underneath the result of a Ryzen Threadripper 1950X in terms of single core performance. So that means we're relatively around the Haswell era in terms of performance. But again, we are sipping power from the wall. But let me show you how to raise the TDP real quick in the BIOS. You pretty much just need to go over here to power and performance, CPU power management control. And then you go over to view slash configure turbo options. And then you just go down to where it says power limit one and you set that to 25,000. Now for power limit two, I also set it to the exact same thing. The power limit two was already set to 35 watts by default, but power limit one is what you care about the most. I just ended up setting power limit two also to 25,000 just to make sure that it would stick. Now we can jump in real quick and take a look at some of the gaming performance because we're not going to focus too much on gaming for this. But this is rocking a Intel UHD graphics with 16 execution units. And this has a maximum clock frequency of 1200 megahertz. And you are looking right now at Left 4 Dead running at the 25 watt TDP. You can see that we aren't really maxing out the performance of our iGPU, but our CPU also isn't being fully maxed out. Of course, this is Left 4 Dead 2, which is a game from an era where the CPU having a bunch of cores really didn't matter at all. So this is well within the range where a four core, four thread CPU like this would have actually just been a relatively nice system to have at the time. But of course the iGPU is going to leave a lot to be desired. This is an extremely cut down version of Intel's iGPU. Just as a comparison, the i5-1135G7 had 80 execution units in comparison to the 16 that are in this. But this really isn't meant to be a gaming system, or at least that's not what would make it interesting to me. Of course, you are going to find a lot of games are going to struggle on this system. As you can see here, Valorant is not holding up well, but you can see it is because of the 100% CPU usage that ends up coming from the fact that the anti-cheat on this is extremely CPU intensive. I have no doubt that if Vanguard wasn't as CPU intensive, the game would actually be running pretty well on here, as you can tell by our averages. It's the 1% lows that really suffer. There are, of course, plenty of incredible games that you can actually play on this system that are going to perform spectacularly. Of course, we're talking about games like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Shredder's Revenge or Hollow Knight, which give decent performance on this little system. And there is a massive library of these awesome, wonderful 2D titles that a lot of the times end up being the best games of the year that are fully playable on a system that is this low end. I mean, realistically, you're going to be able to play some of the most popular games in the world. I mean, Stardew Valley runs perfectly fine on this. I can guarantee you grandma is going to love playing Candy Crush on a system like this. I did also try The Sims 4 since I know it is one of those games that is extremely popular for people that don't necessarily have gaming computers. Personally, I have some friends and family that don't really have gaming systems, but they actually do play The Sims on there and they get sometimes even worse performance than this. So this was doing actually surprisingly well. I think if I put this in front of the vast majority of them, it would actually end up being a better experience than what they're used to. So I actually consider this a relative win because again, the user base that plays these types of games don't necessarily have high-end gaming systems. It's within this range that, you know, people that are playing these games are usually shopping around. So like I said, if you have anybody in your family that has been using a PC that at this point is about a decade old, this is going to be a really, really nice improvement. And I mean, balloons, which is literally just digital crack, runs perfectly fine on this. And what I'm trying to get at here is I'm just trying to explain to you that this is a system that meets the needs of the vast majority of people out there. Because let's be honest, a lot of the, what we do on computers has become extremely simple and it runs on practically anything. The vast majority of people on the internet are going onto Facebook, are going 
going onto YouTube, are going onto TikTok, are going onto Reddit, are going onto Twitter. They're all going to the same places. And these websites have not become so dramatically demanding in comparison to where they were at 10 years ago. And what has happened is modern hardware has advanced so much that a low end chip like this meets the needs of the vast majority of people out there. And especially at the price, it's hard to complain about the performance. Look, let me show you something. What you're looking at right here is my Unraid server. This is where I pretty much run my Plex server and I back up all of my videos onto. This is running on a Celeron G3930. This is a KB Lake Celeron CPU that I managed to get for practically nothing from some miner that was getting rid of a bunch of hardware. So the motherboard and CPU came together and it is two cores and it's paired with eight gigabytes of RAM. Now I'm showing you that because I want you to understand that this little system has more than twice the power of the server that runs my entire life pretty much. And that's what I'm trying to explain to you right now, that this has more power than what the vast majority of people out there are ever really going to need. And I guess ever is a strong word, but the demand that people have in terms of what they do on a computer has only been going down relatively speaking in terms of the performance gain that we've had in terms of hardware. I promise you grandma is not needing an eight core 16 thread cpu just to play some candy crush she needs what's in here i mean it's already barely the beginning of the year and i already have pretty much found the perfect christmas gift for three family members i still have family members that are rocking core 2 duos and sandy bridge era systems and this is the perfect little box to essentially just gift to a family member so that they can have a actual modern up-to-date system i do have some other recommendations though if you have any gamers out there in your family or anyone that would be interested in doing any kind of more advanced 3D gaming, then getting the B-Link SCR5 mini PC might be a better move. It does come out to be more expensive, but you do get twice of the amount of storage. You get twice the amount of RAM. The RAM itself is in dual channel, and we are talking about six cores with 12 threads instead of four cores with four threads. It's certainly going to be overkill for grandma, but if you have anybody that wants to do gaming or is interested interested in any kind of video production or anything like that, spending the extra money for the SRE5 is actually going to be worthwhile, especially because now B-Link actually does have a model that has a Ryzen 7 5800H. Now it is going to be more expensive than the B-Link Mini S12, so keep that in mind and really only get that if you know that the person that you're getting this for or if you yourself actually needs that extra performance. But me personally, I already know that I'm going Going to be picking up three of these b-link mini s12s for some family members because a lot of them are really due for some upgrades but they're not just great systems for your family members let me show you something really cool that i actually ended up doing with this little system so what I actually ended up doing was I hooked up my Avermedia Live Gamer Ultra capture card to the mini PC. Now this is a 4K capture card. It's really overkill for what I use it for really since every system that I test is only up to 1080p, but it's nice to have the flexibility of being able to go all the way up to 4K. But it works with this system because all it needs is a fast USB port and it has plenty of those. And in fact, if you watched my last Hogwarts Legacy video, that that was actually recorded with the mini PC itself. Instead of using the capture card normally hooked up to my desktop PC, I just used the mini PC and it did a fantastic job. All you need to do in OBS is pretty much just go to the advanced settings and here set your encoder to quick sync. You can either do H.264 or you can do H.265. Now for recording, I use the CQP setting set at 18 and that did a perfectly fine job in terms of recording the actual gameplay and it was actually actually really great. And that's not really a surprise to me. Intel has actually always had a really great encoder. It's just that at this point, it's gotten so good on these low power systems that you can do a lot with it. I could actually use this as a recording and streaming PC. And the best part about this little system is just how little power it actually ends up using. At its stock configuration, while idle at the desktop doing pretty much nothing, we were getting anywhere between 9 to 11 watts being used 
would fluctuate a little bit just depending because Windows does tend to do things in the background every once in a while. But at max load, even when you're pushing the CPU to its absolute limit, it only uses 20 watts. And if you configure the TDP up to 25 watts, it will only use 25 watts from the wall. And this is really incredible levels of efficiency because even AMD systems, just because they say they have a 25 watt TDP does not mean the whole system is only using 25 watts. The 5560U version of the SRE5 actually ended up using around 40 watts while set to the 25 watt TDP for the CPU. And that was under full load while doing Cinebench R23. In comparison, the N95 was maxing out at 25 watts when set to a 25 watt TDP. So both the idle and maximum power draw of this system are actually really, really nice. And it's those low power numbers that actually make it a really great system for a starter home server. You can replace the M.2 with, it says a maximum of two terabytes. I would like to try a four terabyte just to see if it would work on here, but officially they say two terabytes. And in terms of the SATA SSD, you could in theory go all the way up to eight gigabytes. There really should be no limitation on what it will allow over the SATA connection. Really the most cost effective way of going about it is to either get a two terabyte M.2 and a two terabyte SATA or a four terabyte SATA. Eight terabyte SATA drives are still extremely expensive, but you can get some four terabyte ones for not that much money. You throw that in here along with maybe a RAM upgrade up to 16 gigabytes and you have yourself a fantastic system. I mean, again, I showed you my server where I run everything in my life and I'm using a system that is more than half the performance of this. I would replace my own home for server with this system if it wasn't for the fact that the storage requirements that I have are just ridiculously high. If I just needed five to six terabytes worth of storage for everything in my life, this would be so perfect. Because if all you really are going to end up doing is running Plex, maybe some torrenting programs, and most of what you're going to be doing is just file storage, it's really hard to argue for anything more than this. Especially since it really just depends on what part of the world you live in, but if your power costs are extremely high, the efficiency on this will end up paying for itself extremely quickly. Really where I would say it stands in comparison to the rest of the B-Link lineup that I have tried is that it really is the everyman computer. At $200, it's really hard to compete with just the fact that this has really great performance and it will be almost enough for practically anyone. My only criticism really is that I wish that they would have a 16 gigabyte option and that the default storage was 512 gigabytes instead of 256. Six. But it's also extremely easy to upgrade and those upgrades are relatively cheap. So at the price point, you could pretty much get together a system that will last someone a very, very long time. And you can always find something interesting to do with these little systems. If you've always wanted to have a Plex server or a home file server, this is a fantastic way to start. But I'll go more in depth into the performance once I've used this system up for a bit longer, just to really give you guys a full in-depth experience with it. I'm pretty much going to be using it as a daily driver for a couple of days. Now, obviously I'm not going to be making any YouTube videos on it, but anything outside of that, I'm just going to be doing on this system just to see what it ends up being like. So expect another comprehensive look at this specific little system later on. But as it stands right now, I really, really like this system and I already plan on buying quite a few of them as gifts because it just, it hits everything perfectly for what I would need to get my family on some more modern hardware that's going to save them some money in terms of power and it gives me the peace of mind that they are on hardware that isn't so ancient that they are one bad click away from just completely having everything that they have ransomware but anyways i will catch you in the next one